continue with uh, one of our developing stories. The president of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Justice Mandi Samaya, has been recommended as the country's next chief justice. The Judicial Service Commission made the announcement earlier. To talk more on this, we're joined by former Constitutional Court Justice Zach Yacoub. Justice Yacoub, a pleasure to have you on the program this evening. Now, the nomination of uh, Justice Maya is being seen by many as a step in the right direction. Uh, what do you make of this? So what are your initial thoughts on this? Okay, firstly, you can call me Zach to start with. <laughs> okay. It, 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 it is um, a very interesting question because the JSC had a very difficult decision to make. There were four very worthy candidates, all of them worthy in many, many different ways. And it wasn't the kind of list where you could say, the woman triumphs because she is a woman, because there were candidates who had all range of different skills, and we can talk about that in a little while. But that is the first point to make, that is that it was not an easy decision. The second point I want to make is that one doesn't know how the decision was made. I've often said that the JSC must have guidelines. We must know the guidelines and we must know why and how they made the decision. Now, with such a close contest, with so many four really serious and amazing candidates, it is very difficult to comment because there are no guidelines and there are no reasons. So one doesn't know why they made the decision. Of course, it is salutary that because they gave no reasons, the president might feel very happy to say that he doesn't have to give any reasons either because they are just recommendations and the president is not bound by them. But having listened to the interviews, I was very, very concerned. Mm. I must say that I admire Justice Maya a great deal. She knows it and I've told her so. The problem though, is that once you say to any man that women say you have abused them yeah. and however much at the level of rumor it is the denial doesn't go anywhere because once that sort of allegation is made it sticks it is there absolutely and completely and i felt quite unhappy listening to that part of the interview because I thought, my God, whatever he says now, once that rumor is out, yeah. that is the end of that because nobody will believe a denial at that level or hardly anybody. And therefore it's very important for proof to be had. So I want to say that not knowing why they made the decision is important to me because if I had been a judge today and they took that allegation into account at all, then I would say if they took that decision into account against him, that that was absolutely and completely wrong. So we have no guidelines. Mm. We don't know why and how the decision was made. We can't comment on it. On the face of it, it looks like um, a decision which is justifiable. But if you look at the unhealthy allegations which were improperly made against the the, 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 the just president of, of Gauteng, then I think that there are very serious problems. So hopefully 
we will see reasons one day. Yeah. Hopefully, the JSC will account for their actions, and then I know that I sound quite unintelligible at the moment. And that is not because it is a Friday evening. It is because we don't have the reasons. And it's really quite, quite, quite complicated. And, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm not very helpful. Yeah. But that's where I am. And over to you. And <laughs> you now have the lawyer's job of cross-examining me. And I'll <laughs> answer all the questions to the best of my ability. Thank you. We, we will expand a bit about some of these concerns that you raised, but I want to also focus a bit more on the person that is Justice Maya. Now, she raised a, a, a number of uh, a, a problems, especially facing uh, women, not just on the bench, but as legal practitioners, also explaining that at some point uh, she, there was a situation where the court didn't know what to do with her at, at, at the time when she was uh, pregnant. Uh, speak to us about really what for you stood out when listening to some of the inputs being given by Justice Meyer? No, no, no. Those were terrible things. Women suffer amazingly. And I'm afraid that I was also responsible for that in a way. Not for Justice Meyer's suffering, but for my poor wife's suffering before I began to understand life when I was about 30 or something. Because the women oppression is a huge and difficult problem. And I found it personally very hard to learn about it. I think I've now learned. But sometimes I still make a mistake because I was speaking to a wonderful woman lawyer friend of mine and she agreed with me about something. And I said, yeah, man, you are quite right, man. I'll give you a bottle of perfume. Mm. She said, don't talk nonsense to me. I prefer a bottle of whiskey. So I said, thank you. You have educated me. And I was educated on that about, what, six months ago by a lawyer of some repute, a woman lawyer whose name I will not mention. But we all continue to learn slowly. And women remain horribly oppressed. The majority of male people find it very hard to cope with it. Mm. I, and I think that I have succeeded uh, in doing it to a considerable extent. But still, I, I still continue to make a mistake, I promise you. And I made this mistake about six months ago. So the women position in South Africa and the women judges position in South Africa is a very difficult one. I would hope that the women who were judges with me uh, will confirm that I treated them with complete care and complete respect and absolute collegiality. Now, Justice Yakub, as we uh, wrap up our discussion, I also want to uh, touch a bit about the process of, uh, well, the interview process per se, and expand a bit more on it because you'd be quite familiar with how it uh, plays out. Now, the JSC interviewed four shortlisted candidates for the top post throughout the week following a what many call a thorough selection process, which even for the first time involved public nominations. Now. It's important for us to note that the decision still lies with the President Cyril Ramaphosa to make uh, his preferred pick on who the country's next Chief Justice should be. What kind of considerations do you think he should be making at this time? I think that firstly he should ensure that the reasons of the JSC are made public hmm. and that he considers them. If that doesn't happen, then the next thing he has to do is evaluate the JSC interview, how that will pan out, and, and how he will decide, and what advice he will get. But I want to say a couple of things. Firstly, I hope he will disregard completely the innuendo in relation to... Um, the, the just president of 
of, 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 of the Gauteng division. I forget the names of these divisions as we go along. Yeah. And he's stuck in relation to women. That is a level of such utter rumor mm. that he must disregard that. That is the only advice I would give the pres president. As long as he disregards that rumor, absolutely and completely as meaning nothing, then as I see it, all the other factors which came out at the JSC are actually open for consideration. They can be evaluated in different ways. Different people will attach different weight to different things. Mm. So one doesn't know who I might decide it one way, you might decide it another way, the president will decide it another way, Malema will definitely decide it a different way. But in the end, the president has to make that decision on the basis of all the facts available to him. The only recommendation I can make that he must not take, please, this rumor into account because if there's anything that is dirty, yeah. uh, this is a dirty rumor. Always a pleasure chatting to you, sir. And despite your insistence, I'll stick, still stick to calling you a Justice Yakub. That was a former Constitutional oh Court judge. No, no, I, I'll call you about that. <laughs> Excellent. You. Always a pleasure chatting to you. That was a former Constitutional Court judge, Zach Yakub, speaking to us there about the nomination of Justice Manji Samaya as the preferred candidate of the JSC for the country's top post of Chief Justice of the Republic.